hi guys welcome back to my channel please subscribe like and share so today i'm going to be talking about my experience in kinshasa and basically to prepare um you because i've had a lot of questions from people that are going back for the first time or moving back to live there i've always had questions because i travel to kinshasa quite a lot some of you that know me or my family you know that a lot of us have gone back home we've traveled to kinshasa lived there come back to the uk now for obviously um various different reasons but most of us are still back home so this video is just really to prepare you because i get a lot of people with questions and it's always a similar type of questions you know how to get ready for kinshasa how to travel with children um if you're moving back with your husband or your partner or your wife how to prepare for that how to um or what to expect from the family back home you know how to make friends how to get jobs i'm not an expert at any of this but this video is just basically to give you an insight kind of make you feel comfortable about going back home at the end of the day congo is our home so um i always encourage people to go back so as a disclaimer i'm going to start by saying um everything i'm going to say is in no way meant to be bringing down congo no i'm actually here to encourage you to go back <laughs> at least take a trip just to see your family or just to see your country see what it's like see what the hype is about so i am not intending to offend anybody um i'm just here just being honest about my experience my family's experience and i'm really not making any of this up how to prepare for congo really um so i've gone back to congo as a single person before i've gone back with um my partner i've gone back with my children i've gone back with my family so i kind of have experience of how to prepare in all different circumstances um most importantly what applies to everybody is getting your travel vaccinations so you need your yellow fever vaccination and make sure you keep your card because you need that card as proof of vaccination at the airport in kinshasa if you don't have that card trust me they'll make your life a living hell just by the airport and by the way it's no longer 10 years it's it's once you're vaccinated it's for life it used to be um a 10 years renewal but now you can get um that vaccination once and that's it if you're going for a short term like less than a month then you need your malaria tablets make sure you speak to your gp and um just to make you aware you have to pay for those medications so discuss which ones you're going to go for and some of them can be taken daily some of them is once a week and you need to make sure you understand when and how to take it some of them can give you side effects also read those um but then some of them if they're not taken on time they're not going to work so you're pretty much wasting your time apart from um yellow fever vaccination and malaria tablets look out for other injections such as rabies you know for like um tetanus make sure you take your mosquito spray that's mostly for night time because <laughs> that's when the mosquitoes want to um come and have a bite at you for the long flight depending on if you've got sickness you can take your sickness tablets so make sure to prepare yourself financially and i mean take take your time planning your trip just like any other trip plan it in advance there's no such thing as actually right or wrong airlines it depends what you want to do some people just like a straightforward flight some people like to stop over for example turkish airline stop in turkey do some shopping and then carry on some people don't mind um going the kenya or ethiopia airway route they give you 223 kilos each so that's more luggage for you um the air france and um brussels airline nowadays they do 123 kilos um, for the cheapest ticket and then if you pay a little bit more then you get 223 kilos it's just depending on what you want to do and how quickly you want to get there then you have to think of what time you'll be landing in kinshasa i think royal air morocco lands at like some unsociable hours 
if when you think about it the airport route to wherever you're going to go to isn't safe at night time so don't try and land there at 11 p.m then get yourself home really late at night that's just causing more trouble for you um so financially you can prepare yourself for at least a year i would say including your tickets which can vary from let me be realistic 390 or 400 pounds return and up to 1200 per person depending on how big your group is going to be you really have to think about which time of year you're going to want to fly as well from july all the way down to the beginning of september that's quite expensive um december tickets are expensive as well just look out for deals um if you'd prefer you can use travel agencies as well i used to use travel agencies back back in the days um with them you normally pay them a deposit so you make a payment plan basically i stopped using travel agencies because it was a lot of chasing <laughs> it was a lot of chasing <laughs> It was a lot of chasing these agencies so imagine for example i don't live in london right the agency i would have found them online normally um you contact these people you don't really know once you've paid them they've disappeared with your money right and you know you've paid them so you now need to start chasing them to just confirm your tickets because once you've booked through the agency, even if you call the airline, they don't get your details until some last minute. So you're really not in peace until you get your um, ticket. So I just thought, you know what, forget it. In the end, it kind of works out the same. If you just save your money and pay the airline straight away, you have no stress of chasing the agency. You can speak to them directly. They can do your refunds depending on what ticket you're getting. They can do your exchanges. Another thing to consider as well is that now with the pandemic as well, you don't want to be going through um, third parties. Just go straight to the airline when you're ready and pay for it. In terms of booking hotels, I know people who have booked hotels in Kinshasa and have stayed in hotels, that's fine but make sure they're the popular ones or ones that you can at least look at the reviews um so that you feel and or you're safer when you get there because when once you're there if you don't really have family or people that you can trust which is i know most people don't I mean, most people have that issue um you need to be somewhere where you feel safe they could charge something like a hundred dollars a night or two hundred dollars a night even actually yeah, from the hotels I've also been told nowadays, but I haven't used it, that there's Airbnbs. And I know a few people that have used it. Again, with Airbnbs, it's, it's a thing of luck, really. Um, try try to be very organised in a sense whereby you have your things kept really safely. Otherwise, you'll see people wearing your clothes on the road. You won't know how they got it. <laughs> but realistically, they just really went through your stuff. Try and get yourself... Um, some information if you don't want to stay with family that is or if you don't have any family to stay with you could always stay at somebody's flat whose purpose really is to just have guests come around and these people don't necessarily have airbnbs it's normally word of mouth i know quite a few people actually that rent out their apartments um built just for people who come from abroad come and stay for a few nights or, or a week or two then go back home or a month um go back home it's just whatever agreement you have with them prices for that could start from 40 dollars um to about 60 dollars a night obviously it's more affordable than the 200 dollars a night somebody asked me about which areas would i recommend if somebody was coming from here to stay in i'm only going to go with where i've gone and seen so obviously not to offend people from different areas i would say it's probably best to stay somewhere where there's probably going to be electricity and some water getting there um but there's some areas like jebe for example <laughs> it's a nice area is it's in town or close to town um but electricity is rubbish rubbish electricity electricity used to come back like 11 p.m and then just 6 a.m boom it's gone so jebe is a nice area kitambo as well with kitambo there's good transport you can get to gombe or um 
other places quite easily from Kitambo. Gombe itself is nice as well. It's just obviously the, the, the prices would vary. There's um, Beauvin. Beauvin is nice as well. Ma Campagne, Pigeon. Um, there's Limité as well. So all those areas, they're quite nice. I would say you'll probably still be in your comfort zone. And there's the concessions as well, actually. It's a, like a gated community. Um, where there's also security so that's quite good water wise you can also be in a great area for example gombe and there's problems with water so it's just a matter of when you're searching make sure you ask those questions okay although you're in a good area um just find out how often it goes normally the the, the best people to answer those questions is not the commissioners that are going to look for places for you it's the locals like the neighbors the people that, that live around there, the people that sell outside, they'll be very honest. They'll tell you these things. Um, somebody asked me about cars, rentals. In terms of sorting out cars, I would say um, previously when I've gone, we had family cars. So if you've got family cars, great, use those. If you've got somebody that will give you a driver and um, a car, that's even a bonus. Just make sure you obviously prepare for um, petrol money so you can have petrol in your car. And make sure you're there as the driver is putting petrol in for obvious reasons. If you give them the money, <laughs> they could just come back and say they did um, add the petrol in and really they just probably put like equivalent of £2 and, and pocketed the rest. So please make sure you're there just to make sure that you've put it in. Secondly, um, there's obviously the local taxis and the buses as well but then um you just have to think of the safety side of things i i don't actually know what advice to give when it comes to taking those because i didn't i just know that a few people that i know especially at the end of the month um were kidnapped literally a few people because everyone knows it's the end of the month so everyone knows that people get paid so they will wait for you around um around the bus stops or like the taxi stops um and then they'll mug you basically or take you to cash point so you can withdraw money so just be careful with that um there's also obviously um car rental places or there's also people that rent their cars you just come to an agreement it's about research do your research before you go okay so now we're going to talk about traveling so i've taken my kids um before they were one years old so the, the one that I took at 11 months old, she had to get her yellow fever vaccination done because it starts from 9 months old. And also make sure you give that vaccination at least a month before they travel. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective um, for some time, they say. Anyways, I took her from 11 months old and then the other one I took from 4 months old. And obviously, the first time I was so scared, I was like, oh my god, this girl, she's got a dummy. She picks up everything from the floor and puts it in her mouth. But kids will be kids. <laughs> you can prevent or try and avoid things from happening. And you just turn your head from one second, they have something in their mouth. Um, but I definitely made sure, and I always make sure, to sort out a babysitter. So you have to make sure that you sort out at least somebody that can help you is I, I think the heat is just too overwhelming to do anything i'm not gonna lie it's the heat if there wasn't heat involved then i would definitely be probably just doing everything myself anyway so but at the same time as well you're on holiday you need somebody to stay with the kids while we, while you do other things so i had i've always had a babysitter prices for baby babysitter can vary depending on how much you can afford or what you want from them um for the flight i normally put the kids in like track suits something comfortable from here all the way down to when you start almost arriving in kinshasa because the heat actually starts from all the way up there when you're in the air some spare socks for the kids spare sandals so they'll wear the trainers from heathrow wear the trainers wear a hoodie even their jackets actually because on transit it's normally cold take toothbrush and the small toothpaste <laughs> i do find that after you've been sleeping on the flight for too long it's almost like you've just slept overnight again so you need to brush your teeth before landing and a change of clothes for when we're arriving so i'll put sandals i just put them in like a light top 
just something short sleeve a light top because when you get to kinshasa um if you've never been you won't know what i'm talking about but if you have you know what i'm saying there's like a massive crowd just <laughs> just outside the airport waiting for obviously there's there's people there waiting um to help you with the luggage there's people there waiting for other people there's literally there's always so many people so i don't want to take the kids out in just like the pants and and vests like and and then just be welcomed by all these people they're watching because the heat does get to you and all the stresses of passport control <laughs> and uh, the yellow fever people trust me you need to be in something light um, someone said to me how would you travel um with the kids in terms of car seats and push chairs i normally have the light push chair obviously i i have two under uh, or i had two under three years old so i just took a light double push chair for them but when i only had one child i took the light one the lightest one you can get and also i try and reduce my um my hand luggages when i'm traveling with the kids i normally um have a backpack so i would have a backpack on my back and then i'll carry her on my front and um if I'm traveling with my husband, even great, there's two of us. If you wanted to get yourself ready for Kinshasa, I always try and do my hair here, but knowing that I'm not going to do anything so extravagant, or I might just wear a wig and then get there, get my hair done. The hair is so cheap to get done over there. You can literally get hair done for 5,000 francs, which is like equivalent of three pounds, depending on who you go to. <laughs> they normally what you need to bear in mind in everything um that's been sold if it's not like in the main shops they always have this system of overpricing if they know like you're not local um so like when you're looking for a hairdresser i would i would get somebody else to try and find you one when you're trying to in fact buy anything at all don't open your mouth <laughs> don't open your mouth because as soon as they realize uh, you're not from here the price can just double triple so be careful with that and that's in anything you do literally everywhere you go um or anything you want to buy have somebody who's local who can speak and um get the deal done before it comes to you because once it gets to you that's it man that's done <laughs> my nails yeah I, I would do it here but nowadays there's places where you can do it for like 60 dollars um full set there's people that come around and can paint your nails for as little that's even that's even more cheaper than getting your hair done mil de mille francs which is like what 50p to a pound they can paint your toenails and your fingernails you should probably take your own nail paint although they have some just some of them it's not that great and when you think about it it's been used on everybody they they go around on the road so they, they've used that on everybody just so you can for hygiene sake you can take your own stuff yeah so i think that's probably covering like the getting ready and um making your way to kinshasa kind of side of things i'm just going to answer some questions actually um that i've been asked um somebody said what's the best location for family holiday or living um i really think i, I spoke to i spoke about that when i was talking about location so you just have to make sure that you find out what the place is like when it rains in fact with anywhere you want to rent or um or stay it's best to find out what it's like when it rains why because <laughs> there's a place um we stayed in actually and it was beautiful but then as soon as it rained for some reason water would come in so the windows were done in such a way that there was spaces in the on the sides and water would come in so if you weren't in the house or there was no one in the house when you come back to your house it's flooded when it rains some areas can really get flooded so you just want to make sure that you're not in an area where when it's rained you're you're basically um pissed because you can't go out um in that rain water there there's also electricity so obviously safety wise it's just best to to know what it's like what the outside is like what the area is like like i said um it's best to um to find out 
by asking the neighbours. If you're not there physically, get somebody to do the job for you. If you can't trust anybody that you know or you don't actually have anyone to ask, nowadays there's agencies, trustworthy agencies that um you can contact from here and they'll do the job for you just for a little cost, obviously. Okay, someone said, um, what's the best healthcare provider and costs? So the good news is nowadays there's probably better healthcare, but just make sure obviously that you're insured. Please, please, please. Um, you can get insurance. If you're from the UK, you know this. You can get insurance from the post office. You can get insurance from your bank. You just never know if anything is going to ever happen. Better be insured than to get there and, and sorry. Yeah. Um, in terms of the costs though, some of the hospitals will have to ask you if you come in emergency, you, you may have to give at least $5,000 deposit. Yeah. So don't quote me on that. Just obviously get your insurance make sure you take your precautions but um if you're unwell just don't go stay when you come back or when you feel better then you can go there's obviously some of the national hospitals as well but um me personally i wouldn't recommend them because um some of the hospitals it's just names now moving on best schools and fees um there's some english speaking schools now there's obviously american school there's um belgian school there's a german school um, those schools, I like the private ones, they're private ones, they're specifically aimed, I think, at people who can afford them, who want their kids to have a notion of like English, German, American and and they do send um, their students as well to like America on trips and um, school curriculum will be slightly different to Congo. From what I've heard from different experiences, they're cheaper. From the younger kids, it's cheaper. And as they're growing up, it's, it's going higher. So you can either pay yearly or you can pay per term. You have to make sure you contact the schools. Um, again, it's, it's a matter of research. You go on your Google, you look at the type of school you want to put your child in. There's obviously the free schools as well, but it depends what kind of continuity you want them to have. So if your child is already in the UK speaking English or you know you're going to end up coming back in the UK, then there's no point putting them in a totally just French speaking school. Some people would do though actually, so they can learn French, but then they can learn French from home. So regardless of where they are, if they're in Kinshasa, just know that they'll end up speaking French and Lingala and whatever other language people speak at home. I'm quite lucky that my children, they're no trouble on the flight at all. I find that every child is different. Um, the first two, they're great on the flight. The last one is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> the only flight that I saw she was fine in was a night flight and that's for obvious reasons because she slept the whole flight. You don't need to take any noisy toys because believe me it's gonna end up annoying your neighbors it's quite a small restricted place on the flight uh, make sure to plan the kids food as well um for the flight i forgot to say this before make sure to plan the kids food on the flight so if your child eats for example porridge at 10 a.m you can take the porridge in like a in like a bowl make sure to take you can take milk if you've got under two years old, you can actually even take water as well. They, they will allow you water at security. You can take the kids' food because the aeroplane food, I found that kids, might, they didn't like it. It was it was basically a waste of time. So thank God that I had snacks. They give them like colouring books and whatnot, but honestly, that didn't do the trick. So things like getting their games on the iPads, um, getting their favourite snacks, they'll probably end up sleeping most of the flight. Someone said transports. I think I spoke about transport, but then I just want to add um, traffic. Traffic in Kinshasa is not your friend. In fact, it's your enemy. They obviously done the sort of mouton um, to try and reduce traffic, but th there's just more cars. There's just more circulation. So there's traffic regardless. Um, it, last time I went there, it was a school holiday. So I could say, yes, there wasn't that much traffic, but then... I know when I was there and it was school time, it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. Um, I would I would say to try and always leave. Don't leave when people are going to work and coming back from work. And that's almost like here. So between um, 7 a.m. 
and 9 is rush hour and then from 4 p.m all the way to like 7 p.m is a nightmare so if you want to do anything go in between go out like 10 school traffic it's not just actually it's not just actually at 3 p.m they have um two rounds so just make sure you know the times of when the schools around you um finish so that you're not stuck in that traffic because you can really be stuck for hours and then someone said where to meet people so my experience with like meeting people yeah um <laughs> i didn't have any friends all i had was family literally all i had was family and then you tend to realize that the same family you left when you were younger are not the same people um so just obviously be careful when you're like rekindling your friendship it's just a matter of um meeting people for people i think so if you have for example you're going back home um with a few people from here i think that's how some people meet make friends normally it's like through networking networking is the word that i was looking for yes through networking um that's how you kind of make friends who will probably be on the same wavelength as you so how do you go on about getting a job in kinshasa or congo is normally a recommendation thing when you're recommended that's when you get the contact it's sad to say because you have somebody with a great cv or somebody from here who's going back and and they just want to work in their home country but then if they're not recommended then um sometimes that person could spend four or five years even more um looking for a job you know is 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 the people you know i'm literally not gonna lie like we wish or i wish that it wasn't like that i wish it was just like like here where you you go on the website you apply they like your cv they call you and and it's not always that's how people would get the job but i would probably say the majority of the time that's how people get the job i know somebody who's got a job recently through linkedin um so if you're looking to go back and start working then i would say update your linkedin profile and add the relevant people that in that field and and you can just start throwing in your application skills if you've got the skills if you can sell yourself look on the websites add your your cvs um keep applying keep applying for the 100 applications maybe one or two could get back to you keep applying make yourself available for the interviews mention on there that you're ready to come at any time you're offered the job in the same time as well make your plans okay so if i was to get invited today for an interview good thing nowadays anyways people can do interviews online which is not a problem would i be able to just leave and drop what i'm doing now and go back home um, and start working so you need to be able to answer that question prepare yourself in terms of where are you going to stay how far is work from here how what family what kind of support do i have i know i know um an agency as well actually that provides um employees for people dating scene <laughs> somebody said how about the dating scene you know, i am not a relationship expert but i'm just going to give my advice in terms of what i've seen without offending <laughs> people it's a bit hard to figure out first of all um what they want from you really and that's like everywhere actually you can't just say always in congo it's everywhere but um i would say um through people then you can meet people that might be on the same level as you sometimes the friendship circles as well but then um there isn't any dating clubs that i know of that i can say oh look if you go to that club yeah you meet somebody i don't know you just have to be careful with with people in in obviously congo nowadays i watch <laughs> um probably a lot of or i hear a lot of stories and you're just like whoa damn man why investments a lot of people come to us and they're like oh um i want to go back to kinshasa but i don't know what to invest in what would you advise um what's working nowadays what's not working do your research on how or what equipment or what stuff you can bring from here or from china or from turkey or from wherever or india or whatever and how you're going to get it back to congo yeah 
or even locally actually and then how you're going to set up stick to what it is that you want to do and then find your customers it works out sometimes when people have relations and you know oh i know so and so and then yeah that's just them taking five steps up the ladder whereas if you don't have any contacts you're probably starting a bit lower but it's about um knowing what you want to do what your passion is and sticking to it so that when it gets hard down the line you don't give up there's people investing in um buying land and then building when it comes to like stuff like buying land get yourself information as to where am i buying who's actually going to live there and okay when you finish building and they start living there how much rent are they going to pay so just really think of yes you have the money and um you want to invest in something what is it that you're going to invest in where are you going to invest in it who's going to look after it for you because we've had stories as well we've had stories where you send your whole container a few months down the line no stories of your money or excuses or you, you've left your shop there, come back here, you keep sending stuff there, but then there's always excuses. Or there's taxi, taxis as well. People have said, yeah, yeah, taxi works, taxi works. But then taxi driver is always coming to you with stories. So um, those are things to really, really consider when you're, um, you're not there yourself. If you're going to be there yourself, it's fine. You learn the ropes. You learn the ropes, you learn how to be more like in. You just have to... Um, to put his plead like they say <laughs> so someone said to me um so in terms of the costs what are the immediate costs when you're going to live in kinshasa the first thing that i mentioned it before i think you need if you're going with kids you probably definitely need a nanny then you have to decide whether you want them to how you want them to come some people can come every day monday to saturday and then have sunday off some people come around and they sleep over and they go back every weekend or every every two weeks or once a month or whatever you agree with them depending on how how you're working or what events you have running and what you do or what your agreement is with them really um you need a driver if you're not going to be driving there yourself is a very <laughs> busy country or busy city to be in actually kinshasa um I did drive there, I drove, but normally on Saturday and Sundays, it wasn't that busy then. So if you, if you drive here, yeah, it's just on the other side. It's like going to Belgium, you're driving on the other side of the road. Um, the only thing is with driving in Kinshasa is um, a lot of intimidation on the road. A lot of intimidation on the road, a lot of um, like what the videos you see circulating, it's actually real. You know, if you make a little mistake or... Or even if it's not your mistake and um, the warden sees you and they feel like stopping you and, and causing you hell, then that's, that's it. You, you're done. In those kind of cases, you either need to be with a driver that's like really like courageous that can confront them. You need to either pay them up some stupid amount or you need to like have a, a phone number for somebody who can just help you out in that sense you need a gate man or somebody at security at home um you need a cook like i said as well before <laughs> although we do all the work here ourselves cook clean wash your clothes this and that tidy up and drive and everything um somehow when i'm when i'm i'm in kinshasa like the heat alone just discourages me to do anything but eat so you definitely benefit from having having somebody there to cook and one thing i used to do when i used to, when i actually lived there was um we would have some the cook so the cook would come monday to saturday have their sunday off but then on the saturday they'll cook food for like two days so that sunday i don't really have to do much and and it's not really like, oh, I'm being lazy or whatever, but Sunday is mostly when that's when we had motive. If we didn't have anything to do, like normally on Sundays, there won't be any, any electricity anyway. So in, in unless you like mastered how to turn on the, I don't know what it's called in English. Um, What's it called in Lingala again? Lituka. 
yeah the this fire with um charcoal yeah <laughs> no charcoal in it um you probably need somebody to <laughs> cook and then you might just warm it up on a sunday warming it up is not a problem or even eating it like cold or or, or lukewarm it's not a problem it's more the turning on the charcoal that was an issue boy whoa I tried it once here yeah, and I'm telling you like I was there for like three four hours <laughs> just trying to turn it on that was mad some people also have a, a like um they call them lavandier somebody that comes and washes the clothes and irons I didn't I didn't really need that actually because I had a washing machine so I had a washing machine put the clothes out and then um who would who's iron it? I think it was the the babysitter or the cook when they got free time yeah oh one thing to know is that once you wash clothes and they've been hung outside make sure before you wear them and i know we don't always do that in the uk make sure before you wear them um it needs to be ironed why because when there's flies around and they come and and poo basically on the clothes or leave the eggs sorry on the clothes if you're just gonna warn it um that can go into your skin and it turns into worms so please make sure to um get your clothes ironed before you wear them um make sure not to drink tap water because of typhoid like with the kids even myself actually i wouldn't brush my teeth with just tap water the water isn't filtered so if you drink it um to be honest some of the locals drink it it's fine by them but for some reason, because you've been drinking filtered water here, as soon as you get to Congo, your system isn't adjusted to the water. It's not adjusted to the food. Most people actually in the first week will get sick because of like just how the how just just because you're eating different foods, really. So th that one is one thing, though. Do not drink tap water, not even to brush your teeth with in case you end up drinking it. Um so use bottled water nowadays there's places that sell bottled water um one thing to avoid which my mom always told me before was salads um it's only because you don't know how they've washed the lettuce so that would probably make you sick as well before you come back make sure to get yourself like a cure of malaria so cure malaria tablet um you can get yourself um medication for typhoid as well and I've never had this until last time when I came back, which was weird. I literally was feeling like I was, I was like nauseous, like bloated. My mom, my mom's had this a couple of times. So she's told me before. And when I had this, I knew exactly what it was. I knew exactly what it was. Luckily, my auntie in London had um, some of that medication and brought it for me. Ways to avoid, obviously, malaria. I'm just going to talk about malaria, I think, because that's one of the most common um, things that happened there i spoke about um the mosquito spray so those ones i used to apply them on the kids and myself um especially like on the legs all the open like part of your body that's going to be out apart from your face yeah after 5 p.m we used to close the doors literally whether it's nice outside just close the we doors we haven't had malaria we were literally trying to avoid it like the plague um we would um sleep under the net spray the rooms spray ourselves um the, the the one you spray the room with was obviously different you'll notice that places where there's a lot of like water from um from sewage or like there's a lake or river or whatever there's probably more mosquitoes where there's trees as well there's more mosquitoes so obviously just be mindful of where you're going to live in that sense it's not a problem but just obviously make sure and some areas as well are very like known for having malaria malaria patients so obviously that, that means there's a lot, a lot of mosquitoes there all right so i think i'm going to be concluding with the next few um questions otherwise i can talk about this forever so somebody said to me oh when you get overwhelmed with a lot of family the thing is with um going back to congo is i know people that don't tell anybody they're going back here yeah? and obviously that works from individual to individual right people that don't say anything and get there then start informing people slowly and that's for obvious reasons i would say if you've not been back for ages um it's not a bad idea 
it's not a bad idea to just first of all keep it quiet and then get there and then see how things are doing are, are going sorry and then see people as of and when because at the end of the day as soon as one person sees you they're gonna tell everybody and then you're gonna be getting visits at like 5 a.m and i'm not joking before you even wake up there'll be a, a bunch of people there waiting for you um be prepared which is something I found, I found that it was more, it's cultural. Somebody will come and see you, but then you have to prepare transport money, um, for them to go home. So don't be like, okay, so what are they waiting for? No, they're waiting for you to release them and pay and give them transport money to go home. Um, <laughs> it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. It's just they're used to it and you're not. So, um, money wise, um, they asked me as well, oh, it's best to use cash or card. I wouldn't use my card in Congo just because their card machines aren't always working. I don't, I'm not about to be embarrassed at the till, stuff like that. So, and, and the banks as well. Um, sometimes you go to the cash point, there's no money or your card will get taken by the cash machine. So it's just long. It's just long. I would just advise to take cash take cash but keep your cash somewhere where no one knows where it is when you go out with people as well expect that you're going to pay not always i think when these people are on the same um that have the same mindset as you you're not going to like you know like here when it's like you go to someone's birthday party and everyone pays for their meal or um everyone kind of takes care of themselves it's not always like that um, in Congo, like especially if you're the one who's initiated the at the um, trip, or if you've invited people, so expect you're going to pay. Um, so a lot of pocket money is needed for when you're going. In terms of what you're expecting to see outside, um, there's a lot of population. There's a lot of people outside. There's always something to laugh, um, laugh, to make you laugh outside there's always noise there's always churches music um there's always something going on outside the vibe is nice that fresh foods just don't forget to like oh yeah don't forget to keep washing your hands as well um because if you don't wash like you know hey obviously before covid i would say people didn't really wash their hands like that and obviously covid has taught us that so washing your hands is very important just to avoid you getting germs because apart from covid there's also other germs you can pick up there um give yourself like gastroenteritis which is not fun make sure to keep washing your hands um and yeah just enjoy yourself don't forget to take your sunglasses don't forget to take your perfume as well don't forget to take your deodorant <laughs> and um don't forget to take um light clothes I didn't notice before, but some of our clothes here, even summer clothes, like when I go and buy the girls' clothes, although it's summer clothes, but it's still thick. So you need to, you need light material. So it, it doesn't have to be revealing, but it can be light. Um, one thing to know is when you go to like official buildings or like official parties, um, you you've been invited by like let's say you're going to a, a, a minister or you're going to um a wedding where for example somebody from the government is going to be there you can't wear this tank tops or what do they call them in english who even knows those singlets you can't wear you can't be revealing your arms it's just how i even asked the question once i said um so they refused for me to enter somewhere. I was like, why? I'm with my husband though. They were like, no, you can't dress like that. I said, but I'm not dressed. They're like, oh no, you're wearing Ozolat Olati Sengle. I'm like, no, I'm wearing a top. <laughs> my argument was, I'm wearing a top. Okay, you lot don't want me to come in because of your rules. But then they started telling us we're Bantus and um, our culture doesn't allow us to dress like that so they want you to dress proper so if you're gonna go anywhere and you feel like i'm um, showing a bit of skin just make sure you've got a little um shawl just to cover your shoulder your to cover yourself i guess so i hope i've answered some of your questions and i know 
there's people with a lot of questions and I also know that questions won't finish today. Um, I really do hope I've helped you. I hope that you can go to Kinshasa and have a chilled out time and that I haven't scared anybody. If anyone has any questions or any worries or any um, advice, any further advice, anything that I've not mentioned, um, please do message me. I will be as honest as possible. Um, if anyone needs any guidance in terms of finding a, a babysitter, somebody that's going to drive you around, somewhere to stay, some, maybe a car to rent or anything at all, do let me know and I'll put you in contact with people there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, stay subscribed. Do share with your friends and thank you.